by the way, one of these microphones for singing. Not really good. It's not forgiving. If your singer songwriter just like steps to the side, the the audio is ruined. There's really nothing more satisfying than eating some Nutella and watching other people work. Those poor guys have to clean up all of the crushed wood that gets crushed by the steel rods. These things are extremely heavy, like the smallest ones are a ton and the biggest ones are like 12 tons. But enough with that, welcome to the studio. Today I wanted to do a special video all about microphones. And not only microphones and which microphone to pick, but also how to get the best and cleanest recording possible. So there are a lot of things you need to check before actually being able to record the best quality possible. Let's start first with the most simple, the most obvious, it's of course your talent. For example, you're recording someone like me that is like recorded for video and just speaking. You need a different microphone in different scenarios than for example recording someone in the studio that is singing. And about the talent, the artist, the person in front of camera, there is not much you can change about it. If the person doesn't tell an interesting story, the audio quality doesn't matter, no one is interested in watching it. If you have a singer that just sings off-key horrible without emotion in a weird Russian accent, it will be hard to fix it no matter what gear you use, no matter what processing, editing you use, it's baked into the file and there's really nothing you can do about it. Ah, that Nutella break was really good. Let's get to the second most important thing. This place is a good example, and that is location. In here, a ton of reverb. It's hard to fix and post. It's better to just get it right while you're recording. And it just sounds way different compared to a vocal booth. I mean, in here, no reverb. It's absolutely dry, absolutely silent. Perfect conditions for recording but you don't always have them. If you're shooting outdoors, there might be wind, there might be other people talking, traffic in the background. So there are a lot of factors you have to think about. So you need to know where you're recording. So now let's get to the exciting parts, the microphones themselves. Those are the next parts in, in the chain and are right after location and talent, the next most important. Also one more thing to location, this might be part of location, that's actually the distance between you and the microphone. For example, if I'm here a little further away off axis, you already lose a ton of sound quality. So whenever you're recording, keep that in mind. Your talent should face the microphone, the opening of the microphone. This depends on the microphone and be as close as possible. Just be careful if you get really close, the bass gets emphasized. That might be something you want or don't want. It, it really depends. And the first microphone is also by far the smallest. This is a lav mic. It's really tiny. It's omnidirectional. This means it picks up everything around it. You usually attach it to your talent. This way the body shields one half, only the other half is really open and it's really close to your subject, to the mouth, to the person speaking and picks up fairly good audio quality. Disadvantage, it's omnidirectional, so it might also pick up everything else if it gets close. Sometimes when people move, it starts picking up um, the, the rubbing noises, which just ruins the audio immediately. You would also never ever record a singer or songwriter with this. It just doesn't have the dynamic range to pick everything up. If you go really loud, really quiet, it immediately loses its quality if you get further away. But the biggest advantage is you can use one of these microphones just by yourself. If you're running gunning, just one person and you attach it to your talent and they can even like turn around and you still get good audio with all other microphones. This won't happen. This always stays on your talent no matter what they do. So this is perfect, especially for people that are not used being recorded with a microphone. You just attach it to them. They forget about it and you always got clean and good audio. They also, of course, come in wireless options so they can run around and you still get the audio. This sometimes leads to cases where people still have them on and are on the toilet and you can hear that on TV. Embarrassing but that's the audio guy's fault. But let's actually attach it really quick and, and give you like a quick demo. So yeah, that's what it sounds like. We all know this sound is awful. And really no matter how I turn it, twist it, this sound is pretty consistent. But it also picks up background stuff 
if it's close to it. And just in defense of all laugh mics, this one right here is a really cheap one. Someone sent it to me for free, so I don't even know what it's worth. Oh, speaking of new gear, I just got two new packages. Well, that's something for tomorrow. But yeah, let's get to the next microphone. Just really quick, and I'm already sorry that you have to listen to that. This right now is the internal camera microphone. It's stereo, which sounds a little weird because it's not a good stereo. It's really noisy and it picks up everything. I mean, really, if I snap like behind the camera, in front of the camera, even you holding it, breathing, it's in there. It's horrible, don't ever use it, maybe just for reference or if you're filming a music video, it's fine to sync the song again. Next up, the typical shotgun microphone for on-camera use. This one right here is a Shure microphone. By the way, all of these mics are linked down below in the description if you're interested to check them out and find out how much they actually cost. This one right here, on, off, this has a battery. It can boost up to 20 dB, so it, it gives a little bit more gain into the camera, which reduces the noise. So let's maybe just attach it and see what this sounds like. So yeah, the cable is a little short because it's really just supposed to sit on top of the camera. It's shock mounted, so if you move it, the shake doesn't end up in the microphone. And it's a shotgun microphone, so it's directional. It's picking up what's in front of it. It doesn't pick up the stuff from the side that much. It really loses quality and volume. And from the back, it's it's really unusable. It, it just sounds tinny and, yeah, almost no volume. Perfect to sit on top of your camera. You can also get one of these, a dead cat that goes on top. This makes sure that whenever there is wind or, like, like the camera is moving fast, it doesn't end up in the recording. This really prevents like 99% of all of the wind noises. Without it, just like this foam thing, it doesn't do a whole lot. So if you're outside, definitely get a dead cat. And one more thing about shotgun microphones, they don't zoom in into sounds. I know some people might think that, but that's impossible. A microphone can only pick up what's reaching the microphone and amplify it. It can also narrow the, the, the angle it's picking up. For example, this one right here has like an angle like this, like maybe 40 to 60 degrees of pickup in front of it, where it sounds good and the rest is dim, but it's still picking up sound even from the side and from the back, just less. So if you want to listen to someone talking 100 meters away, this mic won't do a whole lot. It's not zooming in, even if you get a mic that is longer, it doesn't zoom in even more. It's just narrowing the pickup so you can aim it more onto your source and make sure to eliminate everything around it a little bit more. So keep that in mind. It, zooming microphones it's just not possible you know physics and stuff i don't want to get into that i might do an episode where i explain how microphones work which is really interesting especially if you get to the studio microphones because there you have condenser microphones dynamic microphones rib microphones and they all work differently which is quite nice to know when you're working in a studio and speaking of working in a studio as you know this place is a nice fully equipped studio with the vocal booth right next to it. Let's check them out because they definitely have the best quality, the most dynamic range. That's what you use if you just want to get the best possible quality. Back in the vocal booth, now we're getting to the really fun stuff. We got here a professional microphone that is used in the studio. It's a condenser microphone. There are different types of microphones. You also got dynamic microphones and ribbon microphones. They all differ slightly and it really depends on your talent. This one right here is really good for recording voices. It's a little pricier, but it has like a vintage character to it. We're really talking like two to 3% of a difference. Also some YouTubers use these kind of microphones because if you're in a controlled environment, if you step off axis, they're way more forgiving. So for example, that's what it sounds like when you're right in front of it. If you step to the side, the, the sound quality should be still good, just a little bit lower in volume. So it's perfect for the studio. Controlled environment, your talent can move around. If they move a little bit to the back or front or to the side, it doesn't ruin the recording. You can still fix it by just compressing it and making sure the levels are all equal. This one is a little bit special because it has different pickup patterns. Let me try and get it out of there. It also, of course, has the nice suspension just to make sure that no mic rumble, no tapping with the feet, anything that the singer-songwriter does 
ends up in the microphone. The special thing about it, you can change the pickup pattern. Right now it's on a cardioid setting, which is the most standard in a studio. It picks up everything in front. Again, if you step to the side, the drop in quality isn't that big. So that's me talking to this microphone and now talking into that mic from the side. And now from the back, it should be a little bit worse, but it's not as horrible as with the shotgun microphone where you turn it around and it just loses all of the quality. And again, to the patterns, you can switch it to omnidirectional. So now no matter in which direction it is facing, it should sound pretty much the same. Just on a side note, this basically works by having two cardioid pickup membranes in there, one to the front, one to the back, and combining those two signals. And then we got here a very rarely used one, it's figure of eight. It's the same as the omnidirectional, it's just like flipping the face. So if you got phases, I don't know if that's already too complicated, but if they cancel each other out, you can make sure this doesn't happen by switching on to figure of eight. So the plus of these microphones, the best quality you can get, you can spend 10,000 on a microphone like this. And yeah, it might sound a little bit different. I don't know if it's worth it. Usually I think around 200 euro and you got something that is good enough to use in a studio environment, good enough to record vocals. Again, your talent and your room matters more than the microphone. The big downsides, of course, if you're not in, in a good environment um, and you take it outside, it, it just doesn't work. This is not a microphone that is meant to be used outside. Another downside actually already has to do with the next step in our chain. We got the talent, we got the room, we got the right microphone. Now comes actually the next part in the chain. Here it's running into this box, through the wall, the cable goes through the desk right here into the sound card, and it was already recording the entire time with Logic. And, and that sound card is like the next part in the chain. A lot of people ask me if they need a sound card, audio interface, preamp to record, and yes, you do. Actually, no matter how you're recording at the moment, you already got a preamp. My camera, I'm picking now everything up with the camera directly. There is a preamp built into that camera. It's just a really, really shitty one with a whole lot of noise. Without my post-processing, even this good microphone that I just got yesterday, it still has a noise floor. And uh, we all hate noise, it, it's just annoying. So my only option is to remove it and post, which is annoying if you do a daily vlog, it, it's just one extra step every single day. Also this microphone right here has a high noise floor, although it has a plus 20 dB switch, which already gives it a lift again and amplifies the, the sound, but it's also picking up noise, especially with camera built in preamps. Thing is the preamp needs power, a good microphone needs power, usually good microphones need phantom power. So in a studio, you use an audio interface that has a built-in gain. You can also use a preamp that is especially made to pick up vocals. They're highly, highly expensive, usually above a thousand euros to get something that actually changes the character of the sound and really helps you in a way that is audible. There are a million other reasons why you should use an interface. In some cases, it's just not possible. Again, if you're gonna running with a video mic pro on, on your camera, there is no way to have an amp in between. It would just add another thing to attach that needs a battery that you need to check to control to just have with you and they're fairly expensive. There are two types of microphones I don't have here. One of them is a studio microphone it's a condenser microphone. These are the ones you see on stage. Those are the ones that you also use in the studio to record vocals. Not typically, but depending on the voice, on, on the singer, it makes sense to use one of those. For example, the Shure, what was it, 7BM? I don't, I don't know what it's exactly called, but everyone just calls it the Michael Jackson microphone. That's what was used to record him for his biggest hits. And it's the podcast microphone. It's like the typical radio podcast microphone. Whenever you record someone that isn't moving and, and you don't need any video, you just get it as close as possible. It just sounds so amazing. The bass is emphasized. If you ever wondered why everything on the radio sounds so cool, it's because of that mic and yeah, they also use a ton of EQing and compression. That mic is actually the next one on my to buy list here for the studio, just to be versatile. And the second type of microphone is actually a whole category of microphones, stereo microphones. I don't own a stereo microphone. If you record voices, a stereo microphone 
isn't needed because you're recording something that is monophonic that just has like one output so why have something and record it in stereo i only see like a huge advantage for stereo if you record like ambient if you're outside you're recording a river so you get like the water flowing from one side to the other a car driving by with a mono microphone a shotgun microphone condenser microphone that's just not possible. I mean, you could use two, but then you get all kind of phasing issues. So it's better to buy a directly to stereo dedicated microphone. And I think that's basically already it. I mean, you got again, the talent, the room, the mic selection, the pickup pattern selection of that mic. Some can switch it, most can't. So you need to pick the specific mic for the task. Then the preamp that can help you to get rid of that noise level. There's also post production editing of vocals. I usually compress my vocals a tiny bit to just get them all more in check. I use a denoiser to get rid of the noise floor. It's not a pretty solution. I would never do it in a studio, but in a vlog, that's that's all that is left you can do. And then of course the cueing, usually it sounds good to um, boost a little bit the top end, to just give it a little bit more air. And the rest of the EQ settings are really down to whoever is in front of the microphone. It really depends on the situation. So yeah, I think we got all covered. The, the only thing you might be asking yourself is what is the microphone that I'm actually recording this entire thing with. So let me try and get it off the camera. So again here, good example for that getting close to it and having more bass. This is a Rode microphone, Rode NTG2. There's also three and four. The two has the advantage, it's battery powered. The four plus as well. So with a little adapter, I can plug it directly into the camera. There is no preamp in between because like it's just too much for a daily vlog. But this is really the, the typical interview kind of microphone. It picks up in a very narrow pattern. So you almost get no reverb, no outside noise, no surrounding noise. It just really picks up what's in front of it. This one or like very similar microphones to this are also the ones used in Hollywood for big productions, but then it's not mounted to the camera. You got someone operating a boom pole and making sure this is always facing towards the mouth of the person speaking. So in an interview scenario, you would have either two of these or someone actually like changing the direction of the mic between one person the other person back again. So yeah, I think that's really it. That's that's probably all you need to know about microphones. I got here another last one that's like a measurement microphone. It's really just to measure your room acoustic. That's a whole nother topic. Wouldn't recommend it for any voice, ambient or whatever recording. It's way too flat. This just doesn't sound really pleasing. So yeah, I hope you learned something about microphones. I don't want to repeat again, talent and location but please don't forget about those two at least. And then just pick the right microphone for the right situation to just get the best audio possible. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see us tomorrow back again here in the studio. Tomorrow is a big day. Please don't miss that. I'm DJing at the World Club Music Dome Winter Edition. There are like 50,000 people. It will be so much fun. It's probably one of my biggest DJ gigs. And if you're interested in more recording, singing, songwriting, music production, don't forget to subscribe. See you tomorrow again. Sign out. This mic is so cool. It just sounds so awesome, no matter what you say. Bass. Bass. We want that bass. Bass. I could make a techno track out of that. Bass. Bass. We want that bass. 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 We want that bass. 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 We want that bass. Bass. Bass, we want that bass, 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 we want that bass, bass, bass.